Hi everybody, welcome. I'm, I'm, not, I'm a little bit, a little bit flustered. It's very early. Today's guest, a lot of people have asked me to interview this person. How will I describe him? He's many, many, many things. The, the, the one overarching thing I would say about him, he has the quickest mind of anybody, and I mean anybody I have ever met. Lee Max. Right, how do we do this? Do we just start? Have we started? What I tend to do is I like to include these lovely sort of indiscreet moments. It gives it a cinema verite feel. So we have and, and it shows we yeah, that's what I'm saying, we started. And it shows a human side yeah. to a rather distant figure. It's a very modern way of doing things because in the old days you'd have had a live band, you'd have introduced me, you'd have read out my CV, I'd have come down the stairs. Nowadays everyone's into realism and naturalism. People want to see behind the mask, don't they? They want to see behind the face that's behind the mask. In my introduction for you, which I've already recorded quite successfully, I introduced you simply as the human being with the quickest mind of anybody that I have ever met. Well, the irony being, I don't know what to say. <laughs> I mean, how do you respond to that? Well, thank you. But I, 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 I'm flummoxed. Well, that's very nice. Thank you very much. I, I'm, I'm half taking the compliment and half glancing at myself because I realise that due to the lighting or due to my health, I'm quite red. I haven't had a drink for four and a half to five years. You still drink. You look better than me. Uh, I've got, I've spent a lot of money on lighting. Oh, you've sussed it all out. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. This channel, the, the YouTube version of this, can this is the say, best. I've heard I've... you say this word a few times now. This, this pronunciation of YouTube. Can you just say it again? Yeah. How do you say it? YouTube. You. YouTube. You. YouTube. YouTube, yeah. Ch YouTube. What, what do you YouTube, say? YouTube. It's ch tube. Am I saying ch? You're, no, the correct pronunciation is you ch tube. You're saying you. No, it's not. YouTube. Tube. Ch tube. It's not a tube, it's a tube with a T, not a tube with a CH. No, but that's how you pronounce tube. T-U-B-E is pronounced tube. It may be a Welsh thing. You say tube. You tube. No, I, no, I, I, I and I want to withdraw that compliment about you having the quickest mind. Well, just because I said you're Welsh. Whilst we're on the subject, I have noticed as well, I've always wanted to mention this to you. But we've spent... The, the phrase you have said more than any other in a professional way since we've been together is, welcome to would I lie to you, all right? And you yeah, pronounce yeah. would I lie to you different. Sorry to, sorry to try and send really gash like, you know. You have always said, welcome to would I lie to you, with the emphasis on the lie. Welcome to would I lie to you, as opposed to would I lie to you. Oh, no, sorry. No, so you have the emphasis on the you. Would I lie to you? Whereas everybody else I know has the emphasis on the word lie. Welcome to Would I Lie to You? And you say, Would I Lie to You? No, I don't. What are you talking about? I'm pretty sure you I'll do it now. Ready? I'll do it now. I'm no, sat there. You're okay, doing it now sense. to prove your point because you'll do it the way you want to prove your point. <laughs> no, I'll do it as I do it. I sense your looming malign presence to my left. Okay, the camera sweeps in. Yeah. I wait until it's gone past. I pretend to look at my cards. Yeah. I smile, I go, hello, welcome to Would I Lie to You? Well, then I can't argue with that if that's what you say. But you have, you have just said something I never knew after all these years. You pretend to look at your cards. Right, let's, um, let's go back. I ask every guest, more or less, where do we meet? Do you remember where we first met and when? My recollection of meeting you for the first time was I did a show on ITV called The Sketch Show around about... 2000, 2001. So you came along, which is quite unusual for comedians to come along, so it was nice to see another comedian. You'd come along to just watch the show being recorded and have a drink in the bar afterwards. And that's when I think we first met. However, you said to me once, no, no, we did a gig together back in the early days on the circuit, and I'm, I yeah. have no recollection of that. But we are going back 25 years, maybe. I remember you, you were very, very slim, nicer word than thin. What? You, you, you were, you, yes, very much was. You, you were whippet-like, 
and you were on the stage and you were very, very self-possessed. It, I, the impression I got was it that you didn't care whether the audience liked what you did or didn't. Proving what I've always said, I'm a better actor than people think. I used to always have this mentality, it doesn't matter, you will never see these people again. Hence the reason, even to today, I can't do two halves. I always have a support act and then I do the second half. I once played Britain's smallest theatre. Now, Britain's smallest theatre, I think, is a bit like Britain's oldest pub. There's loads of different pubs that claim the, the, the rights to say that. But Britain's smallest theatre, apparently, was a place on the Isle of Mull, which was a tiny little... It was basically in someone's garden, I think, and it was a converted sort of... like a big shed. And I think it held, I'm going to guess, 24 people. And me and Tara went, Tara, my wife, obviously, I, and I don't need to tell you that, Rob, but you know, I like to include the listeners. We went to the Isle of Mull and we went to this tiny little theatre and I said, you know what, if I ever do become a comedian, because I've been talking about it, I'm going to come back here and play this venue because it was so exciting. And I went back, 24 seats. And this was after I'd been on the telly quite a bit. Didn't sell out. <laughs> However... When I say didn't sell out, what I mean is I, I, I went out. And when I say didn't sell out, I don't mean it was 23 or 22. It was something like 12, something like half full. The Isle of Mull is a particularly yeah. small, small population island. And also it was winter, so there was no tourists. And then luckily in the second half, I had a support act going in the first half. And in the second half, they, as I was on, they arrived, the other 12. So half the audience had been one party and they were lost. When I first looked out through the curtain, I thought, I can't set out a 24-seater. <laughs> Awful, isn't it? So you've got no recollection then of, of us doing that gig together? Which Can we, I just we, say, which throughout the death... whole anecdote, is that all that was playing on your mind? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what was your thing then that, that turned everything around? What was your thing that made stuff happen? Was it, was it wow. the sketch show? I'd been going on the circuit for a couple of years and... I got offered to host a Channel 4 show that not many people remember called Gas. And it was, it was two series uh, and it was a stand-up show and I was the host. And I'd been doing stand-up for two years. I could not have been any less ready to do this. But someone had faith in me. And I did these two series introducing... The, the idea was to introduce new people to Channel 4 from the circuit. And they were very new at the time. So Peter Kay was on. I think he probably, I, I might be wrong, but his first sort of, certainly his first stand-up appearance, maybe his first appearance full stop. He's just one of the funniest people. When I was touring, I don't know how long ago, maybe 15 years ago, maybe a little less, I did a bunch of dates in the north. I think this was in the Keith Barrett tour where I would get a couple out of the audience and they would sit on the stage and Keith would sort of give them marriage advice. And Peter came to about five of the shows and he sat and he would sit in the wings. He'd hang out me before and then he'd sit in the wings. And this is, he was so massive already, you know. During the show, I'd be doing my stuff and I'd look in the wings and he'd be smiling and what have you. And then you get the couple up on the stage and they'd go up, they'd come sit down and they'd be doing it. And they'd glance in the wings and go, <laughs> And there's Peter Kay. And of course, this was in the north of England where, I mean, he's big anyway and anywhere, but in the north of England, he is a, he's a blooming deity, you know. So they were, they would be amazed. Never bring people up on stage. I've learned this. I, I, my example of, of learning this was on my tour, I used to do uh, a, an opening line, which was I'd bring on a massive box, like, an, like I was starting with an illusion. And I would get someone out of the audience with all the music playing and I'd look like I was about to do a huge spectacular trick. Put them in the box, close the box, padlock it, put a blanket over it, whatever, and then just wheel it off stage. The music would stop dead and the, the gag was I'd just say, oh, I just didn't like the look of them. And that was it. Right? <laughs> so I, I get this box made. It's very expensive because it has to fold perfectly to fit in the car that I'm touring around in and it's... And it, and I've got to commit to this with the music, the lights, everything about it, the costume. And on the very opening night of this 130-day tour, this guy gets up, or I get him up from the front row, I drag him up, I put him in the box like that. 
and, and I go to, to close the lid, and he stops me, puts his hand there like that, and he says, I'm claustrophobic. And I say, <laughs> and I'm the order, I've got thousands of people looking at me, and I, and I need this lid to close with a joke, and I go, it'll be all right, mate, it'll be all right, it'll be all right. And the music's blasted, everyone's looking, I go, and I keep turning back to the audience, and they can't see my face, I go, please, it'll be three seconds, please let me close the <laughs> And eventually, and eventually, I close the lid, I put the padlock on, I wheel him off, and I get him out, I mean, so quickly, right? So quickly. So he was okay, he was okay. I, I managed to have a proper conversation with the music, you know, but just, he'll be okay, be okay, gets off. Night two, right? I direct someone out of the audience. I put them in the box, right? And I kid you not, this woman goes, you can't close the lid, I'm claustrophobic. The second time <laughs> it happens, exactly the same thing again. She gets in the box, but this one, can't be talked into it. I go, it'll be three seconds, I'll wheel you off. You get. She goes, no, no, no. And she holds on to the lid like this. So she's kneeling with her body, up or up there, still out the box, <laughs> holding the lid. And I have to just give up. I have to just wheel her off in that <laughs> position. And then just, music stops and go, I just didn't like the look of her. Doesn't get a laugh, of course, because the audience will go, like, what? what was going on there? I don't quite understand what was going on. And then, for the whole tour, it never happened again. 129 or something more dates. It never happened again, but it happened on the first few <laughs> nights. Because every night, it ruined the whole tour, because every night I was going, is it going to be another one that says no? <laughs> you know? I came on to uh, Would I Lie to You as, would I, lie to, would, I, would I Lie to You as a panelist on David's team. And I was booked to do two, and I didn't come back for the second one because I thought I was so bad on the first one. Yeah, you've one. told me this before, and it's really odd. And you must now look back at that and think, yeah, you. You were great on it. There was not an issue. With I was, it. I was great. I, I was fine. I was, yeah. I was perfectly good but enough. But the paranoia um, you it said quite. you were terrible on it. You cancelled the next one. Yes. Wow. yes. You didn't feel confident enough to do two. However, you did feel confident <laughs> enough to host the next eighty-seven episodes. <laughs> it's odd, isn't it, this job? Yes, it's a strange thing. Um, so anyway, so then I took over as the host. Now that's quite a long time ago. Now that would have been about. 2006, seven, eight. I think we're on series, about series 13, are we? Did you join in the third or fourth series? The third. So we've done about 10 series with you. Yeah, I think, I think so. I mean, yeah. I think you can now see yourself as the host, if that's what you're worried about. They still haven't given me a definite yes. They, they said we're gonna... <laughs> still haven't given me a dressing room or, or the menu for dinner. <laughs> No, I think you're in. I think you're safely in now. You know what? You're all going, we're going to go on tour next year, and you're me, you, and David. As in, I'm just, I'm not telling you that. You already know. Um, are we? Are we? Ooh, what? Please? Where are we going? <laughs> well, will there be food? How long has not has not been going out? Been going for now? Not been going out is been going for. <laughs> you're, you're joking, but everyone, the amount of conversations I've had over the years that go along the lines of this. Can I just say, your television programme is my favourite programme on television. I love it. We never miss an episode of Staying In. <laughs> and I go, so it's your favourite programme ever, and you don't know what it's called. They were just nervous to meet you. How long has it been going for? Uh, first episode was broadcast 2006. And so, wow. and we're committed to another couple more years I think so it'll be 2023 so I think that's 17 years of it being on television it's now the longest running still going sitcom in the BBC's history yes the longest not in the BBC's history you can't have it both ways you can't say the longest program still on television in the BBC no, history. no. which one is it no okay okay it's still still going the, it, uh, the the programmes that are currently on television, it is the longest running comedy or the longest running sitcom that is currently on. But that's been the case for a few years because right. David Mitchell connection. Peep Show stopped. Peep Show was the longest running sitcom because they started just before us, but then Peep Show stopped. Yeah. So we took that mantle uh -huh. and we, we're, we're still going with that. All right. Well, listen, we've taken up enough of your time. Thank you. And... Um... Rod Brydon, <laughs> if we finish... When, are you going to come out of now? <laughs> I have to say, in the same way that you got me into meditating, maybe this is the future. Maybe I'll get involved in this, this world that you've done. You've created your own station, the Rob Brydon Channel. 
You are. That's right. Wow. You are the you are the forward thinker of me and David and you. You're always one step ahead. I'm one step closer to the grave. I have not as much time as you. I don't have the luxury, so I've got to move forward. You've got to grab everything whilst you can. Exactly. All right, listen, on that note, thanks, Lee. See you. Thanks, Rob. Been really great chatting with you. And hey, you and the family must come over soon. Always great hanging out with you. There we are. Right, well, thanks for doing that. Where do I get the money?